swinging yeah. Louisiana team, and that would make that's what makes me feel like this is a good matchup for Kirsten. Gale. I think so too. It's going to force her to spot the ball. Mm -hmm. It's going to force Louisiana to be patient, see the ball low in the zone, see the ball down. Set to face off as the lefty Maya Davis stands in. Kirsten Deal toes the rubber, and we are underway for game three at Love's Field. Steel rocks and fires. And Davis fouling off the first pitch. There's that aggressiveness. We already see already seeing it first pitch. Alyssa Brito already pinched in. You can see Ludlum. She's standing just about even with the base path. Not shocked here. Maya Davis. A lot of speed. Four stolen bases, six attempts on the season. Steele misses a little bit low. And one thing that I really enjoy seeing Kirsten, Kirsten Deal in this start is facing such a large, heavy swinging team. Again, having to spot those pitches. Deal ahead here, one ball and two strikes. It's the leadoff hitter, Maya Davis. Davis on the season, leading this Raging Cajun offense with a 4-11 average. And definitely has some wheels. One, two, gets away from Hanson just a bit, but good location. Outfield's pulled in, infield is pinched tight. Sooner fans come to life. Steel rocks and fires. And gotta love it, ground ball right back to her to take care of the first out of the inning to bring up right fielder Laney Crater. And good start for Kirsten Deal. Right at the strike zone. We saw OU struggle just a bit early in game one. Nicole May just challenged in the circle, labored in the circle, if I'm being honest. It wasn't her best day. I think she would mm -hmm. even tell you that. I think she would be upset if we said she had a good day, <laughs> yeah. right? First pitch to Crater misses low. This, no. is, this is a pitching staff, too, that has really been, I think, the star of all the quadrants. Mm -hmm. The cylinders of OU softball pitching has been lights out since the start of this year, and we saw them struggle yesterday for the first time all season. Skied high to the left side of the field, but Jennings underneath it to glove it for the second out of the inning. Two up, two down to start the game for Kirsten Deal. Brings a first baseman and the first righty Deal will face so far in this inning, and Sam Rowe. But I love the tone that's being set. A little bit of different than what we saw in game one yesterday. It's more urgent, that's for sure. Sam Rowe takes a hack. The swings I saw her take last week against Texas. Definitive cuts. She was patient at the plate. You already see she's down 0-1, just trying to see and spot the ball through the strike zone. Rowe, a junior, hitting 267 on the year. Seven RBI. Takes the 0-1 just outside, but very deliberate so far from Kirsten Deal. Nobody on, two outs here in the top of the first. The 1-1 just a bit low, but the first change of speeds we've seen so far. One, and there's that big hack, Aaron. <laughs> you already said Sam Rowe does not get cheated in the no, box. She really doesn't. The lower body, the turn, just everything that she puts behind contact is really impressive. Sooner fans come to life. Deal fires the 2-2. Screwball just misses outside. Count runs full. Nobody on, two outs. 
Payoff pitch and two out walk. And first base runner for the Raging Cajuns so far in this game. But as a former pitcher, the two out walks and just misses low and away. It's a really good hold. And I think that is a ball. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You got to learn on both sides. I think that Deal needs to learn what she can get away with. And ULL, excuse me, UL, I got I to gotta get my brain around this. <laughs> we talked about that in the pregame, right? I want to respect it. I, I'm going to respect it. Louisiana is doing a great job of staying patient. And we knew this, right? Mm -hmm. We knew that that was, gonna be ha that was going to have to be something that they would have to bring against Kirsten Deal, who challenges up in the zone. Junior Alexa Langley are looking to get something going for the Raging Cajuns with a runner at first and two outs. The 0-1 just misses upstairs, but I like the location. What do you think of the mix we're seeing so far from Deal? She's still settling it. Yeah. On one, grounded to the right side, but it's going to roll foul. And ahead here, one ball and two strikes. Langley is on the year 275 with nine RBI and a pair of bombs. And in true Louisiana fashion, power up and down this entire lineup, one through nine. So one, two is popped up. If it stays, it'll play, but it's going to get out. And we'll do the one, two again. This is a Louisiana offense that's hitting 346 against a left-handed pitcher. Only hitting 264 against righty arms. Yeah. They like their lefties. Well, and coupled with that, Kirsten Deal, lefty getting the nod for the Sooners today. You know that's a stat that this coaching staff has seen, right? One, two. Upstairs, count runs even to two balls and two strikes. So knowing that stat, what makes you think, what do you think the logic is behind Deal here? Reps, number one. Yeah. This is a very deep stat. A lot of talent. We also don't know what Deal is working on, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's always games within the game, and I can tell you that there's not a single arm that steps in the circle without a very specific task in mind. Mm -hmm. Today, I want to nail this. Today, this is my game plan against this team. And I can guarantee you there's a very specific reason that Coach Gasso and Jen Rocha have behind giving Deal the ball. 2-2. Two -two. Catches are looking for the call, third strike. And Deal works around a two out walk to send it to the bottom of the first inning. We're scoreless here at Love's Field. And with Riley Ludlam in the eight and Jada Coleman in the nine. A little bit of a different look, Aaron. Yeah, I, I think that this has been pretty consistent over the whole season. We've seen Riley Boone floating at the top of the order. We've seen Jada Coleman in the six hole. She now occupies the nine hole. There's changes mm -hmm. in this order. Ludlam getting the start again, day two. First pitch to Boone in for called strike one. The senior, Denali Lecker, getting the start. Ogden, Iowa. And the senior on the year, 0-1 with a 3.87 ERA. And Aaron, you and I were talking about this during the break. Great drop ball and keeps the ball down. I wish I could write drop ball in all caps on the <laughs> screen because that is, that's what you're going to see from Lecker, an elite drop ball. Beautifully breaks, tight spin. And speak it of, there it is, his ground ball to short. Bobble by Elstead and Riley Boone is aboard to start. The bottom of the first for the Sooners. And I would expect to see that down as an error. I would be shocked if it's not yep, an I'm error. I think that this is an out that could be made despite the speed that we see at the top of this order. I think that Boone would have given her a run for the money. And it looks like it is ruled an error. He's six to start the game as freshman Cassidy Pickering stands in and takes the first pitch she sees for a called strike. But with that, as we were in the middle of talking about the drop ball, that was it. It that, was right there. That was it. And you're going to see this defense get worked. Oklahoma's not scared to hit the ball hard on the ground based on what they're facing. 
a one way outside. And Riley Boone dancing around on the base pass as she does. Field pinched up the middle, outfield's deep. You've got to respect the pop of the freshman pickering. And one ground ball. Gonna have enough time for two. And Pickering will beat it out at first base, but not before Riley Boone is retired for the lead out. And Elstad, again, you can see this Raging Cajun defense playing with the pitch column. Yeah, this is elite. This is a team that's working together. They know who they're facing. They know what the approach is gonna be in this circle from Lecker, and they're gonna back her up to make that happen. She's gonna use her defense today. The Sabrito stands in, takes the first pitch low for a ball. Cassidy Pickering at first base. Brito, the senior, hitting 426 on the season. Really swinging the bat well. A good hitters count here, two balls and no strikes. But watching Brito yesterday, I feel like every single pitch she saw was either a competitive active take or just absolutely putting a good swing on the ball. Favorite thing about her, active lower body. She buzzes in the box. Like her body just emits energy, full of electricity. She's, you know, constantly moving, constantly bouncing around. 3 0. Catch the corner, count goes three balls and a strike. Lecker on the season only walked four batters in 12.2 innings pitched. I say only. 3-1 count. A little bit of a check swing and count runs full. That's the first defensive swing I feel like I've seen out of Alyssa Burrito this weekend. Yeah, the first oopsie. There we the go. The first undecided, <laughs> I guess. Typically, she's very decisive in the box mm -hmm. with lower body takes. This team's only struck out 49 times all season. Payoff pitch. Line drive in the left center field gap. Pickering is on her horse. She's going to round third. She will score, and Brito slides into second with a one-out RBI double to put the Sooners on top, one and nothing. And Brito does it again. Getting fooled the pitch before, but makes the adjustment. This is how you make a change. Middle of an at-bat. You see the front foot land. She gives herself time to pull the barrel back to make sure that she meets the ball with the correct timing. This is something we saw Oklahoma struggle with yesterday, early in games. It took them too long to make adjustments, and Alyssa Brito makes a change in the middle of an at-bat. Looks like we're going to have a conversation here. And the challenge on the call, what do you think they're reviewing here? Could be maybe leaving early at second base. I don't know what else mm -hmm. the conversation or the, the, the uh, replay would be reviewed for. The only thing that could be of conversation would be base running. There and wasn't a play to be made. And we saw this yet. First offering for Lecker in for a strike. The freshman on the season, seeing that average creep up over 400 at 405. And lifts this, and it's gonna get down in the left center field gap. Brito will score. And Parker's got herself a stand-up double. Suitors take the lead to nothing here in the bottom of the first after back-to-back -back RBI doubles. And Sooners settling in quickly. It's interesting, right before this at-bat, when we were in video review, I witnessed Ella Parker and JT Gasso standing in foul territory as he's working her barrel through the zone, showing her that hand path and that barrel path to see the ball deep. And what do you see? The first pitch that's out of the hand. Oppo. She goes oppo. That's the impact of JT Gasso. No doubt. Associate head coach now, a new title for JT. 
well deserved. Lena Torres stands in. 1 0, nice location on the outside corner, evens it up at one ball and a strike. Well, and that's, again, we talk about this so much here in the game within the game, the coaching that goes on within the game and the nonstop adjustments that are being made pitch to pitch. The drop ball just misses low. I mean, it's, it's not an accident that this offense does what it does. Ground ball to the right side. Will retire Parker at first base as Torres, or excuse me, will retire Torres at first base as Ella Parker moves up to third and brings T.R.A. Jennings to the plate. So much success since J.T. Gasso has joined this coaching staff. 2016, his first year. That was my senior season at Oklahoma, <laughs> and my goodness, he has blossomed into the premier hitting coach in the nation. Jennings in the six hole today. Lucker brings the 1 0, and it's going to get down in the left center field gap. Parker will score. Jennings slides safely into second base, and let's make it a, a trio of doubles here in the first inning to make it 3 0 Sooners. Pure, pure swings. Smooth, just smooth as silk. I think the thing I appreciate about these swings, what I'm seeing from these cuts, is that they're not overdone. We're not swinging for fences, mm -hmm. right? I think that, that that can be enticing. There's electricity in the air. The stadium's full. You got 4,600 people sitting around you. You want to take big hacks, especially after a little bit of a bumpy start yesterday. No question. Kenzie Hansen takes the first pitch in tight. Stands in with a runner at second base and two outs. Ground ball right at first baseman Sam Rowe, and she'll take it herself to retire Hansen, but not before the Sooners put up a crooked number in the first. We head to the top of the second. Sooners up 3 nothing. Deal started this game well, but I agree, Aaron. We kind of talked about it. We haven't quite seen her completely settle in and get in a groove yet. But the DP, Sophie Pisco, is set to lead it off for the Raging Cajuns. Victoria Valdez on deck. The Sooners off to a fast start, up 3 nothing in the top of the second. Pisco seeing it well. She had a grand slam yesterday. Mm -hmm. And Louisiana, tough loss to Miami of Ohio. And a sl absolute slug, and I'm not surprised. No, no. Absolute slug fest in the nightcap. Lost that game 12 to 10 to Miami. But Raging Cajuns rallied late, just came up a little bit short. Deal falls behind two balls and no strikes. This is a Louisiana team that is a, they're a postseason team. Mm -hmm. They have been for a long time, led by Jerry Glasgow, who's had a lot of experience across the nation, a very well-coached team. Was previously coached at Georgia, Texas A&M, mm -hmm. Auburn. And he told me last weekend, this is one of the most talented, one of the most athletic squads he's ever had. Just frustrated really early this season with their outcomes. And Piscos, ground ball up the middle, diving wow. play wow. by Alina Torres to throw her out. And Alina Torres robs a single. Wow. It, it, words can't describe, right? Off the bat, I'm thinking, OK, this is up the middle. A leadoff single. Now they got a battle. But I think that Torres had other plans. This is the range of Sooner defense. Catcher Victoria Valdez stands in. Takes first pitch in for a strike. Alvin, Texas native. 
Sophomore hitting 300 this season. Louisiana, tough schedule early mm -hmm. on. And if you look at Louisiana again, walking into this game eight and 10, they've got a good win over Baylor, but some of their losses have been one run games. Oh yeah, close, very close games. I walked into a gauntlet last weekend at the Lone Star Invitational in Austin, Texas, playing Stanford, the number two Texas. Mm -hmm. Got a win over Colorado State. And then turning around, coming to Norman. It's, it's a but, lot. But this is, this is how Coach Jerry Glasgow mm -hmm. approaches the season. He says, I, I got to stack talent and hard competition early. This is how you prepare a team to run the stretch, to be a postseason caliber ball club. This is what he knows. This is who he Absolutely. is. And the 2-2 two -two just misses outside, count runs full. So Jerry Glasgow from Southern Illinois. I actually played travel ball for Jerry. So you know I've, I've known Jerry. I know the ins and outs since <laughs> I was a family, kid. Iconic Absolutely. family. Unbelievable. Um, as great of a coach as Jerry Glasgow is, even a better human being, wonderful family as Valdez stays alive. But you want to talk about competitor. Oh, yeah. It's in his blood. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, you, you hear that when you speak with him. I think that's where the frustration comes from is because he knows talent. He yeah. sees it. He recruits it. Well, he breeds he, it. So talking about knowing talent, this recruiting class of 2022 was the number one recruiting class in the country. As the 3-2 misses up, Valdez draws a walk. Second free pass given by Deal so far in this game. And we talked about that a lot early, Aaron. Want to see those free passes limited. Yeah, I think for Deal, it's continuing just to chip away at the strike zone. But Louisiana doing a good job in knowing that that's going to have to be in their game plan. They've taken two free, pa free passes now from Deal. And if Deal's going to deal them, then you got to <laughs> take them. I like, I like the pun, Aaron. <laughs> Pitcher Denali Lecker stands in with a runner at first. And start to see Deal, again, start to nibble on those corners a little bit as she misses outside. And Kenzie Hansen noticing it as well as she heads out to have a chat. But kind of getting back to talking about Louisiana and some of the, the recruits that have come through, the 2022 recruiting class was the number one recruiting class of the year. That class are now juniors. So, again, the 8-10 and 10 record is not necessarily reflective of the talent that this team, that this team has. No, no. And that, that really was the... The essence of the conversation that Jerry Glasgow and I had last weekend was that he knows what this team can do. Mm -hmm. And it can be very frustrating as a coach to not see that pan out on the field. They've done some different things in practice. I know in, even for prepping for this weekend, the arms that they were going to face, what he's been doing in practice is live at bats. I want to mm -hmm. see my offense face a live arm. And so that's exactly what they've done to prepare for their competition. It's stick the pitchers in the circle and simulate a game-like atmosphere, game-like pressure. 1-1 one, one misses low and Deal falls behind for the second batter in a row here in the second inning. What you can't recreate is this atmosphere. What you can't recreate is 4,600 fans in the Absolutely. stands. 2-1 lifted and out of play. And I think one thing, too, and you kind of have the unknowns. I talked to Coach Gasso yesterday after the games, and I said, Coach, you know, I feel like this was your biggest dream come true and your worst nightmare, night, nightmare all yeah. rolled into one, right? <laughs> all of the unknowns. There's a good look at Coach. But biggest dream come true, but so many unknowns. The first time this team stepped foot on the field was yesterday. As she, Lucker stays alive. She is not shy about being honest, especially mm -hmm. when it came down to this experience and what this has been like for her. I and mean, she was very frank with me. She said, I, Aaron, I'm overwhelmed. Yep. And I'm you overwhelmed. Can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when a team is looking towards their head coach mm -hmm. and she's feeling that way too, it, it, it can be hard to calm the whole ship. 2 2. And Lecker stays alive. Seeing some good at bats from the Raging Cajuns. So we're starting to see again that aggressiveness come through, but I feel like we're seeing these at-bats of being very selective. A lot of battles. Mm -hmm. Good swings on the right pitches. Not swinging out of the zone. Runner at first, one out. 
as Deal brings the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Changing the eyes and working the ladder with the rise ball as she sits down. Lecker for her second strikeout of the ball game. That is the bread and butter of Kirsten Deal. It's a breaking ball up in the eyes. This is the first time we've seen her really tunnel that pitch to get the bite up and away. Mm -hmm. That's the second strikeout of the day for Kirsten Deal. Two outs. DJ, you mentioned this yesterday on the radio, but half of the legwork for pitches like that to work mm -hmm. is the setup. No, no doubt. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, we talk so much on the pitching side of things, how important your misses are. Yeah. As Deal misses in the dirt, falls behind two balls and no strikes. But every pitch you throw, whether it is intentionally out of the zone, is set to set up the next pitch. And right. if you're if your misses are not quality, if your misses are not competitive, you aren't able to to transition into that next location. Every pitch informs the next pitch. I was not a pitcher, but now being on this side of the game long <laughs> enough, it's really interesting to kind of have that bird's eye view and see the game unfold, see at bats unfold from both perspectives. 2-1 to Vasquez, line drive right at T.R.A. Jennings at short. The deal works around another walk to head to the bottom of the second inning. Sooners up and one of a kind nonetheless. I'm DJ Sanchez alongside Aaron Miller Teeson as we head to the bottom of the second inning as Riley Ludlam is set to face Denali Lecker. Sooners up 3-0. After a three-run first inning, a trio of doubles to start the ball game from the Sooner offense. So Lucker gets back to work. Misses just a bit low. I like the location. The good discipline from Riley Ludlam. The real thing that started this inning was that error at shortstop. That, yep. is, that is now 12 games in a row that we've seen a defensive error from the Raging Cajuns. 12 games. And, you know, we've talked so much about this coaching staff for Louisiana saying we're better than what we've shown. Yeah. Those are the types of things that set a tone for a game. They're the types of things that make it difficult to win those close games. I mean, how many games has Louisiana lost by a run or two, mm -hmm. right? You well, can, yeah, close matchups. You go back and you look at maybe defensive miscues, and they happen, right? They happen. But those are the things, if you want to be a postseason team, that have got to get cleaned up. Lucker fires the 3-1. Line drive to the right side, and it's going to get out of here. Riley Ludlam hit an absolute rocket that barely cleared the right field wall. And the senior stays hot. That home run is brought to you by Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. Sooners make it 4 nothing. In talking to Coach Patty Gasso before this weekend, I asked her, who has shocked you? Who are you most excited about in the lineup right now? And without hesitation, the answer was Riley Lundlum. Not because of the power, not even because of sheer athleticism. It was because of her mentality. Coach Gasso said she's a sponge. She loves the game. She wants to grind. She wants the opportunity. She got the opportunity yesterday. And she took advantage. She took advantage with an RBI single. Wins the start in game two. Wins the start today in game three of the weekend. And goes yard. It's Ludlam's second home run on the season. Brings up Jada Coleman. Balls mine here quickly. No balls and two strikes. So I'm going to be real here. I held my breath calling it for a second because it was hit on such a line. I was expecting it the to rope. hit. Yes, <laughs> I was expecting it to hit the very top of the right field wall and ricochet about 30 feet. I think Crater in right field was unsure as well. The way it bounced back quickly, yes. I think she was unsure if it hit the wall or it hit the bleachers. So I think it hit the railing of it the did. bleachers and Just bounced back in. I mean, you can't hit a ball on a line any better than that. Ground ball through the left side. 
And good piece of hitting by Jada Coleman. You're getting the sense that there was a pretty stern talking to last night yep. about early offense and the absence of it yesterday in day one. Because Oklahoma has shown up today and been on fire the second the car started. They put the pedal to the metal. Three that, runs in the first and now one in the second. That's a tough pitch. I it mean, is. Watching it again on the replay, pretty good location from Lecker. Low and away, and Jada Coleman just went down and laced it through the 5-6 hole. But she takes that pitch. It's probably a called ball. Rolling the lineup back over to Riley Boone. And it looks like we are going to see a pitch. Cajuns heading to the bullpen as Ryan looks to minimize the damage here. Nobody out. And Jada Coleman at first base as Riley Boone stands in. Start of this game, reached on an air. And is really, Sooners haven't looked back since. First offering from Boone, laid down right back to Ryan. Boone's going to beat it out. Coleman will move up to second and talk about applying pressure to wow. a pitcher fresh out of the bullpen. I don't envy Coach Gasso in having to try and make out a lineup every day <laughs> because this, this is what you're trying to consider. Do you put a Jada Coleman in a leadoff? Do you put a Riley Boone with that type of barrel control and that type of speed? Like, who, how do you make out a lineup every day? It's a good problem to have, what? right? Like, that's... <laughs> I'd be drawing names out of a hat. Every coach wants that problem. Yeah, that's so true. Rushman Cassie Pickering stands in. Came around to score a run back in the first inning. As Ryan falls behind two balls and no strikes. We talked just a, a bit ago about the honesty of mm -hmm. Coach Patty Gasso and what this weekend has felt like. I've also appreciated her honesty in some of the decision making with lineups. She said, you know, you know this, Aaron, because you've lived it. Coach doesn't put up with divas. Coach doesn't put up with attitudes or with shticks, you know? So she said, I, I have to sometimes send messages. If I don't like what I'm seeing, I have the depth in my dugout to send a message. That's the truth. You know, you've coached Absolutely. before, you understand. Sometimes you gotta light a fire under somebody. This game, this program, there is not, and she says this all the time, mm -hmm. I'm, so I'm not taking words out of context. I know exactly what you're about to say. There is so not a <laughs> single player that's bigger than this program. Yep. And big hack by Cassidy Pickering as Ryan sits her down on strikes with just pure heat. Blowing it right by Cassidy Pickering for the first out of the inning. You know that's got to feel good for Ryan in the circle just to settle in mm -hmm. after giving up that bunt to come back, strike out the freshman lefty. First strikeout from a Louisiana pitcher so far in this game as Alyssa Brito stands in. Brito one for one, had an RBI double to kind of get the party started back in the first inning. Ryan, nice curveball, catches the outside corner for called strike one. I think the saying that really encompasses that approach is that iron truly sharpens iron. No doubt. And, and that's that, is, that is just it. There are battles for viewers at home, for people that aren't intimately involved with this program. There are battles happening on the field, fighting for positions. Now it's all... It's all healthy battles, right? This is all good. It's all healthy. But it is a fight to get into this starting order. you got to be your best every day. Burrito, 2-2 two, two counts. And a couple changes along with Ryan in the circle. Sophie Piscos, who's in the DP slot, now behind the plate for the Raging Cajuns. The 2-2 two, two just misses low. and. Good take from Brito. That's a tough pitch to lay off. This count runs full. But, I mean, Aaron, you know, we can talk about it, at, you know, at, at nauseum. I mean, we've both been through this program and have been around this program since we've graduated. It's, that's just the expectation. That's the standard. And ground ball right down the left field line. They're going to say it's fair. And Sooners 
continuing as Jada Coleman scores the fifth run of this ball game. Burrito, second double of the day. Momentum just rolling right along. You get a sense that Oklahoma is just fully in control, seeing the ball well, they're patient. I don't know what was said last night after day one was under the belt, but this is a different looking team than what we saw yesterday. A different sense of urgency, a different sense of confidence. It's just a different squad. No doubt. And I think, so we're going to see another review here. Um, and I'm going to assume same thing. Seeing if Jada Coleman left early. Or excuse me. It's a fair so ball. fair ball. Call stands. Second RBI of the day for Alyssa Burrito. Second double of the day and fourth from Sooner hitters so far in this game. Sooners up 5-0 here in the second inning. To bring up freshman Ella Parker. Parker in on the double fun. Back in the first, came around to score a run. Runners at second and third. And one out. As Parker faces Sam Ryan here for the first time today. Ryan in on relief of starter Denali Lucker. Been really impressed with Ella Parker. You know, we, we were talking earlier, Aaron, about, you know, the competitiveness of this team and the expectation and the high standard. How tough, we've both been freshmen in this program, but how tough is it to be a freshman and find your role and do what Ella Parker Pickering and what these freshmen are doing and settling in so quickly. It's very tough. I can remember my freshman season stepping into this program and all returning starters were back on the field having just played for a national championship the year before. That was against Alabama when the infamous rain game happened no. with the Women's College World Series. I called that game. Yeah. It's a long, long day. It's a long day, yeah. So I, I can remember what that feels like. I think of even on for Louisiana, what they did last mm -hmm. year during postseason on LSU. And that, that's a team that's got a lot of quality experience and is a brand new addition to a program. It can be a little intimidating. 3-2 misses low. And Parker. Aboard to load him up, and we're going to see Avery Hodge get the nod here with bases loaded and one out in pinch hitting in Alina Torres' spot. And I would suspect we'll see Hodge stay in this game and play second base. Yeah, I think so, too. We saw her come in yesterday in game two at, at second base. Well, when opportunities are given, given, you better take advantage of them, and this is a pretty darn big one. Bases juiced, less than two outs. Hodge, the lefty, stands in, takes the first offering from Ryan upstairs. Avery Hodge, batting 200 on the season. Had 15 at bats, and a lot of those, I mean, we've seen her get some spot starts at times, but a lot of those have been at bats coming off the bench. And you know as well as I do, Aaron, it, it's a different approach. <laughs> I mean, it is, and you hate to say it, but it's something you have to, you have to kind of, you have to learn a little bit. I told this yesterday to, to Toby and Nicole, you want to know the hardest quote unquote position to have in a lineup? It's being the first person that coach pulls off the bench to have an, a, a hitting opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to be watching the whole game. You've got to be locked in the whole game so that when you do get that call, your bat's hot, your brain's fresh, and you're ready to attack. 3-0, misses upstairs, and it is a bases loaded walk to bring in the sixth run of the ball game for the Oklahoma Sooners. And 
Raging Cajun's a little bit of a pickle here. Trying to, I mean, still a lot of ball game left, but trying to keep this game in check. Bases loaded, one out with Tiare Jennings coming to the plate. What's the message here, Aaron, to, to Sam Ryan? Throw strikes. <laughs> uh, let them beat you. I, you can't beat yourself, right? Justin Robichaud in the circle. Associate head has been at Louisiana since 2021. Pitching coach for the Raging Cajuns. And I, I do believe that that is the conversation. I need you to stay in the zone. Hard to ask when you're facing Tiare Jennings, who is one of the best hitters in college softball right now. Well, and, and compound that with right now, the way that this lineup is set up, you've got Tiare Jennings, Kinsey Hansen, Riley Ludlam, and Jayla Coleman. As this ball is lifted deep to right field, Crater's gonna make the catch, but Alyssa Brito will come in to score the seventh run of the ball game. And Tiare Jennings playing the game with the sack fly to make it 7-0 Sooners. Everybody moves up with runners at second and third for Kinsey Hansen. An opportunity to put this game in run rule territory early. I think you're thankful right there if you're Sam Ryan mm. that you get a fly out to right field. You're thankful that was all the damage out of the bat of Tiare Jennings. Right fielder Laney Crater making the catch for Louisiana. 1-0 to Hanson. Line drive to center field. But right at Maya Davis, who will glove it for the third out of the inning. But not before the Sooners add to their lead to make it 7-0. We head to the top of the third. And Kirsten Deal is back to work. Checks in at second base. And Avery Hodge at short. So seeing a little bit of defensive movement for the Sooners. Giving Tiare Jennings a little bit of a break. Maddie Hayden shows bun on the first pitch. Kinsey Hansen's going to pop out, but not going to be in time. And what a bunt by Hayden. This caught everybody off guard. Beautifully placed by Maddie Hayden, who's been on fire. She leads this team coming into this weekend with seven multiple hit games. And just, just dies in front of home plate. Team leading 13 hits coming into this weekend. She's been the stud in the nine hole. Beautifully, beautifully placed. And that'll be the first hit recorded by Louisiana so far in this game. And bunt again, Maya Davis as Alyssa Burrito. Not quite in time. And talk about quickness. You can't you can't get it done much quicker than that. Yeah, I think that this is <laughs> Brito's not happy about this. Priding herself on covering the territory of that hot corner. She cuts across the field. Lundlum trying to stretch out to make this. And, and this is the right call. I do believe yep. she was safe. But placement. And this yes. is what this raging Cajun team does so well as Laney Crater stands in. 0 for 1 here today. But the two speedsters work their way on. My Davis at the leadoff. She's the speedster, folds four stolen bases on the air. And yeah, Hayden, two stolen bases on the air, five attempts. If you're OU defense, you should be anticipating yep. that short game. Yep. You should not be caught on your heels. Well, and this is a this is an aggressive team. And it's going to drop down right in front of Riley Boone in left field, trying to make the force at second base as the throw gets away. But everybody moves up, and Maddie Hayden rounding third on the throw. Potentially an opportunity to score as that throw got away. What do you think, Aaron? I, I, the aggressive base runner in me is wanting to pull my hair out. I think if... <laughs> If you're tuned in, you see this bounce. This is something that you can see if you're trying to track the ball and track the throw. I'd be taken off. How about this? First hit of the ball game, and it comes three of them back to back yep. to back for Louisiana. First base is loaded opportunity here. They've left two runners on base through two innings. And I have been raving on Sam Rowe since the game started. Just such an aggressive swinger at the plate. 
And if I'm a Sooner defense, specifically if I'm Sooner outfield, I want the ball in my hand. I want to make a play right now. Just a bit outside. First offering to Rowe. And deal in a spot here. Bases loaded. Nobody out here in the third after back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles from the 9-1-2. And the table is set for Sam Rowe. Little pop-up in shallow right field. Wow. Diving catch from Cassidy Pickering. Nobody's tagging. And Pickering saving some runs and keeping some runs off the board. What a play. But you look, or excuse me, Hannah Kaur, we've got a change out in right field. Santa Cora has checked Stunning in. Grab. What a catch. Stunning grab. You know what I wanted here? I wanted the throw to second base. Yep. I wanted the throw. The tag was there, but she was eight steps off of second. I wanted to see the aggressive throw. And I'm not giving credit where credit's due. Hannah Core. Wow. Wow. What a catch. And here's the thing about Hannah Core. Hannah Core is a baller, man. I mean, she can play. She is so versatile in everything that she does. And a sophomore, gosh, yeah, I, what a play. Two seasons ago, before she got to Oklahoma, I called an all-star game back when she was in high school. And Cora, of course, she's an all-star, played in that game. And I saw her make three diving catches in one game. And I thought, yeah, we're going to be saying that name a lot when she hits the college landscape. Big time play. That's what you need when you're in these situations. As Deal still in a bit of a jam. She misses outside to four hole hitter Alexa Langlier. Bases loaded, one out here in the top of the third. And going through the meat of this lineup, again, we've said it a ton. Louisiana, good pop up and down. As Deal falls behind two balls and no strikes. Langley Earl for one here today. With a strikeout, but has a pair of home runs on the season. Nine RBI. The 2 0 grounded right back up the middle. Avery Hodge is going to spin it. And she'll roll a pair to get the Sooners out of the inning. And Kirsten Dia relying on the defense. Talk about big time. This is the defense that. And Chaz, along with Aaron Miller, Tyson. Kenzie Hansen set to face Sam Ryan to lead off the bottom half of the third inning. And Ludlum grounds it to short for the first out of the inning. And I've got my scorebook messed up. Can you believe that? <laughs> you Ludlum know what? leading you, off the inning. If you don't at least do it once in a weekend, Man, you're not living. Every now and then I get the scorebook all kinds of all kinds of a mess. <laughs> but Riley Ludlum leads off the third inning and grounds out one pitch, one out for Sam Ryan to bring up Jada Coleman in the nine hole. Shows bunts and it's just gonna roll foul. And the Sooner defense just absolutely got Kirsten Deal out of a jam. And Kirsten Deal throwing quality pitches. Bases loaded, nobody out. Hannah Core makes an unbelievably, and I don't even know, you know, you see it looping in, not a hard hit ball, but Aaron, you were an outfielder. One of the toughest plays is oh. that kind of that shoestring right in front of you because you're kind of going, if this gets past me, it's going to be a bad day. The bloop is the hardest diving catch to make. Ground ball up the middle. El Sad will retire Coleman at first for the second out of the inning. Two quick outs for Sam Ryan, and this is the first time in this ball game that the Sooners have not gotten a runner on base with less than two outs. And since Sam Ryan has entered this ball game, she's turned 28 pitches, 50-50 on balls and strikes, but a little bit of a tough go in the second inning, but looks like she's starting to settle in. Riley Boone takes the first pitch she sees in for called strike one. This isn't the only time that they're going to face Oklahoma. So I think any outing a pitcher has, any opportunity you get in a circle, you've got to continue to take your reps, learn from them, 
because you're going to face this offense again. You know, when you look at kind of the trajectory of this ball game, game started with an error defensively for Louisiana. Good take by Riley Boone. 12th game in a row that we've seen an error made by the Raging Cajun defense. You know, and coming off of a tough loss last night, 12 to 10. I mean, it's always heartbreaking. hard losing those types of games, you know. So an offensive explosion from Louisiana last night. It's Riley Boone laces the 2-1 into left field for her second single of the day. And breaking up the 1-2 with three inning. Get to see Hannah Core with the yes. first hitting opportunity. So I make that diving catch in right field. And Hannah Core walks into the ball game. Her 12th at bat, a little sawed off. Right to Elstad, and Elsa takes care of all three of the outs this inning for the Raging Cajuns. Sooners go quietly as we head to the top of the fourth inning behind the plate for Kenzie Hansen. And Sydney Sanders checking in at first base. So lots of defensive changes for the Sooners. As Piscos grounds it, and Alyssa Brito cuts it off in the 5-6 hole to throw around for the first out of the inning. Brings up the six-hole hitter, Victoria Valdez. Drew a walk back in the second. And deal worked around a bases loaded jam in the third inning after a tremendous play on right field by Hannah Core and Avery Hodge rolling a pair to get deal out of the inning and really what was the first threat from the Raging Cajun so far in this ball game a trio of singles to set everything up but not able to capitalize and pitch gets away from deal and it's Valdez right on the elbow guard hit by pitch and that is first hit by pitch but third free pass of the game saw the pitching staff just riddled with free passes yesterday. Yeah. Walks, couple hit by pitches. Rare for this pitching staff. And I think if we, if we were to talk to Coach Rocha and, and Kirsten Deal as well, I mean, having three into the fourth inning, that number's still too high, right? As Brooke Elstad stands in. I think 220 on the season. Nice curveball from Deal, just misses outside. Lefty, lefty matchup. This Deal, again, I like what I'm seeing from her so far in this ball game. Has been put in a couple tough situations, but worked around a couple of walks, worked around the bases loaded jam, and has just stayed composed. You were a lefty pitcher. What's what is so challenging, or maybe not challenging, about facing a lefty swinger? Did you like facing lefties? Oh yeah, you did. Okay. Oh yeah. No, it's you know, but. When you have the curveball and you've got that, and we watched Kelly Maxwell do it last night, yeah. right, against Liberty. So this is grounded to the right side. Lilio's going to flip it. Hodge tries to make the turn, but not quite in time. Sooners get the lead out. Delstead beats it out. Got to love the plays up the middle so far in this ballgame defensively. Is this why you like facing a lefty? Well, here's the deal. You've got the curveball and you can break it away, but then all of a sudden 
uh, just as you get those lefties leaning, you come back in hard, right, and saw them off. And it's, you can get to a point where you're able to work east and west, and a true lefty pitcher can get a left-handed hitter to play into their hands. Yeah. Really, really and truly. Well, I so think you just saw that right yeah, there, absolutely. that rollover ground ball. Absolutely. Run at first two outs as Cecilia Vasquez stands in. I was not a pitcher, but I was a lefty swinger, and yeah. I also loved hitting against left-handed. Really? I did. Okay. Yeah. I liked the inner corner. Okay. Felt like I saw that more consistently against lefties. I crowded the plate against lefties. I wanted to Trying make to them take away the outside corner. shiver in their boots a little bit <laughs> on the inside corner. I think I probably would have just hit you, Aaron. Um, <laughs> You're just taking the ribs. Yeah, there we go. Be on your way. Let's Get move on. Get off my plate. <laughs> <laughs> Popped up right behind home plate. Riley Ludlam's got a beat on it. And that'll do it. Seven nothing with eight hits on the board. What a different look we've seen from OU today. Looks calm. Looks calm. Looks controlled. And the Rage Occasions go to the bullpen for the second time here today and go with junior Lexi Delbry. The righty on the season enters the game with a 4.62 ERA, 2-2 two and two on the season and 16.2 innings pitched. And Alyssa Brito stays hot as she lines it again in the left center field gap, sliding in for her third double on the day. This is knowing from a scouting perspective what you're going to see mm -hmm. from Lexi Delbray. She's up in the zone. She's arm side dominant. And that's exactly what Alyssa Brito sat on. I'm going to wait for the letter high rise up and under my hands and I'm going to hammer it. That's the risk of going up in the zone, if I'm being honest, against a team like OU. Well, and here's the deal, to elevate too. elevate the ball. You've got Alyssa Brito, three for three in this ball game, three doubles off of three different pitchers. Each of these, you know, you feel goes a little bit back to the pitch calling. Making a change, do something different. She's got three doubles in the left center field gap. And we're seeing some opportunities as Maya Bland gets her first stop bat of the ball game. Bland saw an at bat last night. Getting an opportunity here. Freshman, so much raw talent. Runner in scoring position, ball in the dirt. Burrito's gonna take off and slide safely into third base on the wild pitch. You get the sense they're playing for a run. Absolutely. Well, and also, too, playing for a run to hopefully put this game away against a very good Raging Cajun offense. You got the opportunity. You've got to put this ball team away because they will continue to fight and claw. Well, how they how they fought and they clawed against Miami, Ohio. We saw what happened late in the game with Miami and Oklahoma. Yes, three home runs. The top of the seventh from Miami forced us to go to the bottom of the seventh so that OU could walk it off. 2-2 two, two just misses upstairs. The count runs full to Maya Bland. No, and absolutely, I mean, it's it's one of those, you've got to finish a ball game. And Brito is off on the squib. Brito will score. And Maya Bland gets the RBI. And that's what happens when you put the ball on the ground. Sooners make it 8 nothing here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Talk about a grace of, aggressive base running from Alyssa Brito all the way around. She's just an aggressive player. It's how she approaches the game. It's not just in one facet of softball, but it's the way she plays defense, the way she moves in the box. It's who she is. Avery Hodge in the box with nobody on and one out. Face Delbray. She rocks and fires.
Hodge hitting 200 on the year. 2-1, shot foul. Avery Hodge has been one of those young players I've really enjoyed watching and watching her development, um, not just at the plate, but she is such a smooth mm -hmm. defensive player. Everything she does looks so easy. And we've gotten to see a little bit of that here today, but I really enjoy watching what she does defensively and, and the, just the athleticism that she brings. Here on OU Encyclopedia, an OU softball encyclopedia. Here we go. Her style on the infield reminds me of Jessica Vest. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's an old school call. I like it. Ground ball to the right side. We'll retire Avery Hodge for the second out of the inning. She's not towering on the infield. Mm -hmm. She's a small stature, just like Jessica Vest, but moves so smoothly, just kind of just floats on the infield. And sometimes that's easier said than done, oh, right? Goodness, I mean, yeah. how, <laughs> the sign of a good infielder is that it looks smooth. I was a bull in a china cabinet the first time I tried to play <laughs> infield. Are you kidding me? Quincy Lilio, Oceanside, California native, stands in. Takes a call strike a little bit upstairs, but good location from Delbray. Nobody on and two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Sooners pushed one across. And just a full swing from Lilio. Say this, Delbray really kind of mixing things. We're seeing her change speeds, not just with the changeup, but working to get these hitters off balance. And ground ball, gonna bounce right over third base. Lilio is on her horse. She is rounding second and get held up at another double. Why not? Two out double for Quincy Lilio brings up Sydney Sanders. Showing off the depth. You get the opportunity off the bench. Late in a ball game here, you take advantage. And not even, you watch it on the replay, not even a full swing from Lilio. <laughs> Just seeing a pitch on the outside corner, throwing the barrel at it and finding a way to get it done. Sydney Sanders, the junior, hitting in the seven hole. We saw Sid get the start in both games yesterday. Did not get the start here today. But you get the sense, Sydney Sanders just trying to get into some sort of groove at the plate, trying to, to get comfortable, almost. Skied high and out of play. So had an RBI base hit in the nightcap against Liberty last night. A good count here, three balls and a strike. Sanders has nine walks on the season. It's the first off speed that we've seen out of the hand of Delbray. And she throws a heavy ball. I mean, everything she's doing you can't sit on one speed, even when she's not throwing that changeup or something legitimately off speed as Sydney Sanders is hit by the pitch. But runners at first and second with two outs. But everything looks like it's changing speeds at some way, shape, or form. She's not throwing every pitch with that high velocity. So completely different look from Delbray. Yeah, this is a name we have heard before. Yep. We've, we've seen her get a lot of action in yep. the circle in previous years. And it was interesting in, in talking to Coach Jerry Glasgow about the use of her arm this season. He said, you know, the, the phrase we keep talking about as she approaches this year is just finding herself. And that's something that she says, too, just trying to find her flow. What's her identity this year? Who is she as a pitcher? And you know this, season after season, year after year, you've got to evolve. Absolutely. You don't have to be brand new, but you have to have a new edge. Ludlam pops it foul, and Delbray ahead here, one ball and two strikes. It'd be easier said than done. And, you know, it gets tougher, too. I mean, Delbray at this point, a junior, a veteran on this staff. 
Ground ball right back to Delbray in the circle and throw nearly gets away. But Sam Rowe hangs on to it for the third out of the inning. Sooners three outs away from a run rule victory. They're up. Coach, talk about her hardest thrower on the stuff. Yeah, and for 60s, almost 70 miles an hour, just commands the corner. Does not have a decision this season. Thrown seven in a third innings. And first offering swung straight through as she's is nine hole hitter Maddie Hayden. Hayden recorded the first hit of the ball game for Louisiana back in the third as she laid down a bunt. Monticelli ahead here, no balls and two strikes. And I gotta say this I love watching. Pitchers come out of the bullpen and hammer the zone early. It's an art of getting in and continuing the momentum and finding the zone quickly. The 0-2 is popped foul. Monticelli, it's been a season at Wisconsin. And has really settled in well to this pitching staff. Again, just another look and bringing that velocity. I love the pitching arm tattoo. <laughs> what, a, what a vibe. It's hardcore. The one two offering grounded to Hodge at short. She'll fire it across to retire. It looks like Jess Vest. I'm telling you. I'm with you. Again, I think. Spitting image. Everyone knows we're up here bragging on Avery Hodge because she has gotten so many ground balls today. I love it. Look at this. So smooth. Boom. Bounces. I'm telling you. We need to do a side by side of Jessica Vest. I like where your head's at. And Hodge fielding a ground ball at shortstop. They both played short. And it's just, it's just pretty. It's just pretty. It's just I love pretty. to watch. Love to watch the infield work. Any infield. I love watching good defense. Yeah. Well, we get to see it a lot here. We're kind of spoiled. I know. Okay. Coach Gasso taking a moment to go have a chat with her infield. And Riley Boone having a chat with Hannah Korf <laughs> across the ball field. Jada Coleman even made her way in from center field to get in on the meeting. I love I just again we've talked about it so much in this ballgame area and it never stops the the scouting the game within the game the in-game coaching it never stops I think we're gonna see a defensive shift this is something that we saw Oklahoma do a couple times this season depending on the scouting depending on what we see approach at the plate you know, okay, over the past few years, just being an analyst, calling games all over the nation, it takes a lot of confidence for one, a coaching staff to make this call and a mm -hmm. defense to back it up. Coupled with, you better hit your spot. You better hit your spot. Plain and simple. <laughs> if you miss, we're gonna get burned. And, and then we're gonna have a totally different conversation. <laughs> exactly. Right? So Quincy Lilio standing by second base. You've got Jada Coleman, who was playing center, now standing at what is second. Second. And Quincy Lilio essentially in the rover. Are we gonna are we gonna roll we're that gonna out? We're gonna roll out. Gosh, I haven't heard that name uh, in a long time. I don't like it, but I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna go with it now. So <laughs> Maya Bland, leadoff hitter, stands in. The first pitch in for call strike one. Now we're seeing this, and we talked about Peyton Monticelli and the velocity she brings. That changes the shift, right? We didn't see this earlier with Kirsten Deal, right? But with Monticelli pumping the gun at nearly 70 miles an hour. Oh, Maya Davis has speed, yes. speed, speed, speed. So right now, if you're on the infield, then you know that if you see the ball and that ball hits your glove, you better be ready to go. Yep. You better be ready to hum it. You got no time to waste. And essentially, we've got Hannah Core shaded to center, basically saying, you're not going to pull it. And Avery Hodge got to be quick and not quite in time. And nothing you can do. 
I mean, that's just what Maya Davis does. She does it so well. A two for three day for Davis. Both of those base hits coming on the infield. From the infield, yeah. Beautiful bunt back in the third. And this one, even with the extra infielder, even with the shift, this is what makes speed so hard to defend mm -hmm. in our game. And Maya Davis is a great representation of that. As you already mentioned, two hits on the day, putting her at 25 on the season. Brings up right fielder Laney Crater. Crater one for two on the day with a single. Lifted to left field and we haven't All seen right. this play come in yet as Hannah Core so in left making another attempt, but this field is laid out differently. Yeah, and this, this truly, this is a great example of a team that's not used to their yep. new home turf. This is only the second day they have ever, I'm not just talking game time play, I'm talking at all. Second time ever they've been on this field. Second day ever they've been on this field. Outfielders still even learning what the territory is. Looks like they're gonna make a swap in the outfield. Riley Boone now heading to left. Core now heading to right field. But the old field, Mark, at Marita Hines, that is foul territory. Yes. That's up for grabs right there. And the the way that Love's Field is laid out, there's a large amount of foul territory, but it's not in that same deep left and right field corner like it used to be. Yeah. And you can kind of see again um, these players just trying to it's almost like playing You're an away field. At an away field, exactly. Just trying to get the lay of the land at home. But Great effort nonetheless by Hannah Kaur. Monticelli brings the 1-1. Hit well to center field, but Jada Coleman is there to take care of it. And the Sooners are an out away from their 70th. I'm going to say it again, 70th consecutive win. Sam Rowe stands in. Reached base back in the first inning via walk, but 0 for 1 here today. Big hack. That's the high heat. Yep. And I'll say this I really like the approach Monticelli has had since she's entered this ball game. Calm, cool, and collected, and just going about her business. Yo, one. Right down Broadway for called strike two. And you kind of get the feeling Peyton Monticelli saying, here it is. If you hit it, you get to rename it, right? 0-2 oh as the Sooner faithful come to their feet. Sam Rowe. The only thing standing between this team and the 70th win of the season, or <laughs> consecutive win. <laughs> Lifted just over the head of Avery Hodge. And the Raging Cajuns stay alive. Muscling through that yep. swing. She almost gets sought up with the strong lower hand of Sam Rowe. We've seen this all season long from the three hole. A strong swing. Not gonna she is not going to get cheated mm -hmm. on a cut. When she pulls the trigger, she commits. Looks so Langlier stands in. The runners at first and second and two outs and talk about smoke. We we don't have the mile per hour up on the screens, but Monticelli is pumping the gun. The Jin Roach is going to be happy about this outing from Monticelli. It's been aggressive. It's been dominant. Now it's this is what you need out of the bullpen. 
This is what closers do. The 0-2 popped up on the infield. Avery Hodge is going to take it herself. Sooners win 8 nothing in run rule fashion. We'll call it 70 in a row. And the Sooners take down 